Australia is home to some of the most unusual species of animals on Earth, and the megafauna that used to inhabit it defy all expectations. Due to its long history of isolation from the rest of the landmasses, the life that radiated there went on a trajectory which resulted in some of the most unique and bizarre animals to evolve, including giant wombats that weighed three tons, and kangaroos that would tower over the average person. In today's video, we'll follow a journey that shows the rise and fall of these giants, from their humble beginnings as evolutionary underdogs to dominating the Australian landscape. Mammals are split into three main groups. The monotremes, or the egg-laying mammals, the placental mammals, which are the vast majority, and these include animals such as humans and whales and giraffes. And then you have the non-placental mammals, or the marsupials. The placental mammals and the marsupials differentiated from each other around 100 million years ago, with the biggest difference between the two groups being their reproductive systems. Both of these groups of mammals managed to spread across the globe, but the marsupials were often outcompeted by the placental mammals. This meant that there was a far greater number of placental mammal species compared to the marsupials, who were far less species rich. This competition limited marsupial evolution to just small possum-like creatures, and they weren't able to evolve into any large animals, as those niches were filled by other more successful groups. Now around 65 million years ago, the marsupials had spread to and had large populations on the landmass which is currently South America, with current American marsupials including animals such as the possum. Around 50 million years ago, a few species of these marsupials migrated across the gap which was forming between South America and Antarctica, and they reached the landmass which formed Australia. This bit of land then split off and became very, very isolated. Historically, the placental mammals were more successful than the marsupials. This allowed them to become the dominant mammal species around the globe. However, Australia didn't have any placental mammals on it by the time it drifted away from the mainland. Isolation and a lack of competition leads to adaptive radiation, which is exactly what happened to the marsupials, and led to the evolution of some incredible megafauna. Adaptive radiation is when a small group of animals radiates into many new species due to an abundance of new food sources and niches. In this situation, the first marsupials to arrive in Australia were probably generalists resembling possum-like creatures. The lack of any other mammals in Australia meant that there was a vast range of food sources not being utilised. These first generalist marsupials could start exploiting these food sources and evolve new characteristics to better exploit the niches. For example, one part of the population could start eating more fruit and evolved features to make fruit eating easier and easier, eventually forming a brand new species. Another section could take advantage of the grasslands available and evolve distinctive characteristics to take advantage of that niche, again forming a new species. This happened many times over for a huge range of niches, and marsupials were able to exploit many of the food sources available, forming many new species. With adaptive radiation often comes convergent evolution. This is a process where different unrelated animals evolve the same features and characteristics as each other to overcome similar problems and niches. A really easy example of this is the evolution of flight, with birds and bats both evolving this method of locomotion, despite being very distantly related. The marsupials that evolved in Australia showed a number of cases of convergent evolution, with the fauna there evolving very similar traits and characteristics to the megafauna currently living in Africa. The resulting Australian megafauna were incredible beasts to behold, dominating the landscape and providing a rich and varied ecosystem. Our first example of Australian megafauna is the giant Diprotodon. This is the largest marsupial to have ever lived. At 3 meters long, 2 meters tall, and weighing nearly 3 tons, this animal is very closely related to and resembles a giant wombat, with very similar dimensions to a hippo, but closely resembling a rhino without a horn. It fills similar ecological niches as a rhino too, largely grazing and browsing near waterholes. But as a marsupial, the mothers had a large pouch to keep their premature young safe. 
It walked alongside humans and is still present in Aboriginal folklore, maybe being part of the inspiration for the mythical Bunyip, with Aboriginal tribes claiming that the Diprotodon bones they have collected belonged to these mythical creatures. However, Diprotodon became extinct around 45,000 years ago, a time period that will be mentioned a lot in this video. Another incredible animal that evolved in Australia was the giant Procoptodon. This was a kangaroo that could grow up to 2 meters tall and could reach up to 3 meters high using its long arms. With this extreme reach, it filled a very similar niche to current giraffes, eating the leaves from trees that no other animal could reach. It was very similar in appearance to current kangaroos, but due to its vast height, it weighed 230 kilograms. Studies have found that the optimal weight for a hopping based method of locomotion is between 50 and 60 kilograms, but being five times over this, Procoptodon would have been at a very high risk of tendon snapping and bone damage. As such, it probably walked bipedally in a similar gait to humans. However, like Diprotodon that lived alongside it, it too became extinct around 45,000 years ago. With marsupials being almost entirely herbivorous, there was a lot of potential for carnivores to evolve and start hunting these herbivores. Marsupial carnivals did evolve, and none were more successful than the marsupial lion. And although this is not technically megafauna, it is far too interesting of an animal to not include in this video. The marsupial lion was a close relative of both Diprotodon and current wombats, not lions as the name suggests. However, it did convergently evolve a lifestyle and body plan very similar to modern big cats living in Africa and Asia. The marsupial lion was around the same size as a leopard, and it led a very successful carnivorous lifestyle hunting big game. A remarkable feature is that the marsupial lion evolved this lifestyle completely from scratch from herbivorous ancestors, all within a relatively short space of time. This is no small undertaking, as it requires a complete body overhaul of both the digestive system and the skull. Now the marsupial lion was able to hunt huge animals very easily, ambushing and killing prey such as Diprotodon in a matter of minutes, far more quickly than a lion can kill an equally sized prey item. This was all thanks to a host of highly effective characteristics it had evolved to adapt to this new carnivorous niche. One feature that allowed it to hunt very effectively was its highly specialised jaws and teeth. By examining the jaws, it was found that the marsupial lion had a bite force twice as strong as an African lion when adjusted for the difference in body mass. As far as the fossil record can tell us, it is believed that the marsupial lion has the strongest bite force of any mammal that ever existed. It also had a unique dental structure with two sharp incisors at the front and molars shaped like razors that were just as sharp. The incredible bite force and sharp teeth allowed the marsupial lion to cause huge wounds that would kill its prey very, very quickly. It would do this by snapping the prey's windpipe or severing main arteries. It also allowed the marsupial lion to grip on very tightly to the animal in the event that the initial bites were not enough to kill its prey. This is where another recently discovered tool in the marsupial lion's arsenal could come into play. It has been found that the marsupial lion had a very flexible and movable elbow joint, as well as an extremely large, sharp claw on its front feet. With these adaptions, it was able to very accurately and precisely control its huge front claws, and the marsupial lion could very quickly and efficiently cause mortal wounds to finish off its prey. This type of hunting style, using the mouth to grip and the claws to cause the killing blow, is not seen in any large cats, and seems to be unique to the marsupial lion. However, much like its close cousin Diprotodon, it too became extinct around 40,000 years ago. So why did so many marsupial species become extinct around this time? Well, there are two main factors. The first reason was that around this time period, Australia saw a large shift in climate, becoming increasingly more arid. Both Diprotodon and Procoptodon relied on large bodies of water to drink from due to their large size. 
More and more of these bodies of water dried up as the climate became increasingly arid, and these species of megafauna struggled to survive as competition for water became more fierce. However, there is reason to believe that this is not the primary source of extinction. Droughts are not exclusive to this time period whatsoever, and these megafauna would have survived other periods of aridity. It is around 50,000 years ago that humans arrived in Australia. Many of these large species of marsupial would have been very tame around humans, not having any prior interaction, making them very attractive animals to hunt, especially as these large marsupials were able to easily feed a group of humans. Fire has been part of the Australian ecosystem for thousands of years, but humans are thought to have greatly increased the rate of fires in Australia, burning large areas of forest far more quickly than the norm. This was done to flush out the large game and make them much easier to hunt and find. With population numbers of megafauna plummeting due to hunting, food becoming more scarce due to human fires, and water becoming scarce due to the climate change, the large marsupials, such as Diprotodon, stood little chance of survival and were eventually hunted to extinction. With population numbers of the large marsupials falling rapidly, the marsupial lions suffered greatly. It was hyper adapted to hunting large game, but was not great at hunting smaller prey. Unable to adapt quickly enough to the change in ecosystem composition, the marsupial lion soon became extinct. These are just three of the many species to have gone extinct around the time of humans arriving to Australia. 65% of all megafauna and marsupials in Australia became extinct around this time. No other creatures have evolved to fill the niches left by these giant animals, with only a few bones and ghost stories remaining, showing yet again the destructive effects that humans have played in changing the ecosystems of Earth.